infinity of 1 over n squared, right? That's what I've chosen to compare it to. Yeah? This is a P series with P being greater than 1, which means it does what? It converges. So I'm going to take the series I'm interested in, I'm going to compare it to a convergent series, which means I'm going to use this one or this one. The top one, right? So what I need to be able to do is show this. I have to show you that the black dots are below the red dots. If I can show you the black dots are below the red dots, I'm done. Do you understand? Nope. I'm going to write that out that inequality. Do you know what a sub n is? Do you know what b sub n is? That, and then see if the inequality is true. So I'm going to now say this. Watch the way I'm writing this. I'm going to do a comparison test. Here's my comparison series. I want to show, want to show, you'll see me use that a lot, want to show what a sub n is less than b sub n. And it's okay to have equality. If they're the same dots, it doesn't matter. Okay, let's write it out. 1 over n squared plus 4 must be less than or equal to 1 over n squared. And then just move things around. Subtract n squared. And get to a statement that makes sense. You all know what I did there? All right, just algebra. Is this a true statement? Yes. Yes. If that's true, that means that's true. And if that's true, then the, the test is going to work for you. That's it. Therefore, sum n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared plus 4 does whatever the other one did. Converges. We, we can only find what geometric series and telescopic series converge to. Look, the integral test we just did a second ago, right? If that integral test would have given us a number, that still is not what our series converges to. It only tells us if it converges or not. Hmm? If it was what? Any questions? Say again? Oh, no, you're right. Never mind. You shouldn't put that before the less than or equal to. It's always just less than. So I didn't know if it meant. But Equality, so if I'm drawing those dots, right? And I'm saying the red ones are always above. Well, they could be on top, right, the same dot. You know, if they're the same dot, then they're going to do exactly yeah. the same thing. How do you choose a different like, an equation to compare it to if it's like, like they just give you a Crazy yeah, like this one? Crazy. Like that? Okay. So let's try this one. What, uh, what does this one do? Take the limit. Let's do the nth term test first. Nth term. Let n go to infinity of the sequence of uh, what sine 1 over n, right? Yes. OK, and then 1 over n that goes, or 1 over infinity goes to 0, sine of 0, 0. So this goes to 0. Test fails. One of the dangerous uh, places you can get into with this is that you start to believe the nth term test never works, and so you stop doing it, and then someone gives you a problem on a test that you're sitting there trying all these methods on that you can't get it to work, and you realize the nth term test gave you like one, like the answer of one, and you should, could have just said it's over in the beginning. You always want to bring that in. Hmm? 
No, like some, some, really, some really mean instructor would do that to you. Not me. <laughs> Always run the test. Um, all right, so that fails, right? But what do we compare that to? I mean, this is, this doesn't look like anything, right? That we've seen is not geometric, it's not harmonic, it's not a P-series. Integrating that wouldn't even be something I want to do, right? No, you don't want to integrate that. So maybe we come up with a comparison, maybe. Sine n, we could try sine n. Yeah, let's try sine n. D do, you, do you think that it's uh, bigger or smaller? Or well, Let me ask you this. If you're, if you're going to compare it to this, that's what you said, sine n, you need to know what that does. That doesn't converge, right? That diverges. So if you're going to compare it to that, right? If this one diverges, then you're going to need to say that this piece is bigger than this or smaller than this. How if this one yeah. converges, oh. Oh, it then it would have to be bigger. So you'd have to show me that sine of 1 over n is bigger than sine of n. It's not going to be a good thing. That's, that's not going to be, that's not going to happen. You could do arc sine, but then you just get what, like 1 over n bigger than or equal to n? 1 is bigger than n squared, that's not going to hold. That inequality doesn't hold. No. Yeah, that doesn't look, so I, I hope I'm addressing your question is that you have to think through this a little bit. This is a more difficult problem, all right? So can we, can we just hold it, hold that thought for a second? Okay, because <laughs> I want to give you the last part of this, of this comparison test, this part three, um, because it will help us address some issues that can get kind of messy like, like this one, all right? We'll come back to this one, all right? So the part three on the comparison test says, it's the same thing. You have to pick this, this other series that you know what it does, all right? But then instead of doing the inequalities, you're gonna take a limit as n goes to infinity of the a sub n over the b sub n. And you're going to hope that that limit exists. And you're going to hope it comes out to be a number C. But you could pick a part though, right? No, no. This, this is what you want to do. You want to do the limit of the ratio of those two. If this comes out to be a positive real number, then whatever the series you're comparing it to does, the one that you are interested in does. Uh, this is a weird result, but it's, it's why it's a test, all right? This must be a positive real number. Infinity does not count, okay? Infinity is not a number. So if you take this limit and get infinity, this fails. If you get zero, this fails, all right? But if you get a number other than infinity, or other than zero, if you get an answer other than infinity or zero, then whatever the series you're comparing it to does, the one you're interested in does. Let me show you this problem, this part three in action on the problem we already did, all right? So I just want you to, to see this. This is the one we did a second ago, right? And what did we determine that this did? It converged because we compared it to this P series, right? We compared it to this, right? So our a sub n was all that, and our b sub n was this. 
And then we set up the inequality, right? And I showed you it was like zero is less than or equal to four, and we're like, yes. But let's try the third way instead. Let's take the limit as n goes to infinity of the a sub n over the b sub n, which is limit as n goes to infinity of what? Flip n cubed over n squared plus 4. Oh, shoot. What happens here? Mm, no. This is n cubed, this is n squared, right? So if you do L'Hopital once, you're going to get <coughs> what? 3n squared over 2n, right? Now, don't do L'Hopital again. You have to simplify this. One of the n's cancels, and that's just limit as n goes to infinity of 3 halves n, right? Do you all see what I'm doing? What does that limit go to? Infinity. What does that mean? It failed. Right? It, no, the test failed. The test failed. Test failed. Yes. So this is, uh, is it kind of clear how this can get pretty confusing? Okay? Because I just did this problem using the comparison test part one, right? But if I try and use the comparison test part three, the test fails. So picking the right test is, it's not like a shot in the dark, but it is, you know, trial and error sometimes. Like the methods of integration. Just kind of like the techniques of integration is, which is why it's inherently difficult. All right, so I was hoping that would work out. It didn't. Oh, well. Can we get back to the sign one? We didn't know what that did, right? I'd like for us to compare it to this. This is what I want to compare it to, all right? Now, why did I choose that? For two reasons, actually three. First of all, I know what this does. This is what type of series? Yeah, you could look at it as harmonic or P series with P being one. They're the same, right? Does everyone realize a harmonic is actually a P series with P being one? Okay. So this is uh, going to diverge, right? So I've picked a divergent series to compare this to. And that's the first reason. What's that? The other reason I picked 1 over n is because I see 1 over n in here. Maybe it'll work. The third reason is because I'm going to set up a limit of a ratio of this over this. And I've seen that before. I've seen that limit before in a calculus course that I taught a couple of semesters ago. That you took? Maybe you saw something like this? OK, so I'm doing comparison test. Right? I'm going to do the third one. I'm going to do limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n over b sub n. I'm going to hope this turns out to be a positive real number, not infinity, not 0. This limit will be the limit as n goes to infinity of sine of 1 over n over 1 over n. Let n go to infinity, what do you get? 0 over 0. And so you can do L'Hopital's rule. This becomes limit as n goes to infinity. Very carefully, what is the derivative of the top? Cosine. Cosine of? Negative 1. Not yet. 1 over n. So the derivative of sine of something is cosine of it. Chain rule times the derivative of what's in here. Negative 1, Negative one over squared. n squared. That's the derivative of the top. You agree? Over 
the derivative of the bottom. Right? Now let n go to infinity. 1 over infinity, 0, cosine of 0, 1. That's a positive real number. What does this mean? It converts. It converts. No. Whatever this one does, that one does. You see, you have to, it's not only about all the work, it's drawing the right conclusion. Go back and look at it. If it turns out to be a positive real number, let's just read this, look at this. Part three, if the limit, if this turns out to be a positive real number, right, then both series converge or both diverge. And that depends on the series you chose, right? I chose a divergent series. I got a positive real number. They both have to do the same thing, which means that one has to diverge. Because this one definitely diverges. Understand? So if you got zero here, could you just choose another series that is convergent? A different comparison. Yeah. Yes. So yes. It means that some of us will have different answers. Like yes. So have yes. And there are some problems where you can use the integral test, the comparison test, the first version, like, like part one or two, or part three, and they all work. And so just depending on the student, they'll, they'll pick their own approach. You look like you're enjoying this. Let's try another one. You want to take a break? Is that what you said? Let's try this. n over 4 to the n minus 3. Is this a geometric series? Well, maybe what we should do is figure out what the nth term test is first, huh? So we don't get ourselves trapped by that asshole instructor. Okay, n term test. I'm calling myself an asshole. Uh, don't worry, I'm not going to blame you. What you say on your own time is, is your thing. <laughs> All right. Hmm? Do what? Were you, oh, were you talking to someone? Oh. Oh, no, no, no. Just what happens here? Infinity over infinity minus 3, so L'Hopital? Uh-oh. I have a feeling people aren't going to know how to take derivative of 4 to the n. 4 to the n times. Close, yes. 1 over derivative of 4 to the n is 4 to the n times ln 4. Cal 1, go back. Derivative of a to the x is a to the x natural log a. And then the derivative of negative 3 is 0. So now if I, if I do this and let n go to infinity, what do I get? 1 over infinity at 0? Fails. OK, so I don't know. But I, at least I checked. All right, now, is it geometric? Kind of, right? Kind of? I mean, I have an n in the exponent, 4 to the n. But I have an n up here that's not in an exponent. So it's not quite geometric. Is it uh, harmonic? Absolutely not, right? Uh, telescopic, I don't think we're going to get cancellation. If we start writing, writing these out, we're not going to get like, things to start going away. Um, anything else? Harmonic, I said. Anything else? P-series? Is this a P-series? Could be. Remember, for a P-series, you need to have your N in the base and P up top, so no go? So the only thing we have left, integral test? You want to integral? You want to do the integral of that? No, thank you. Comparison? Okay, what do you want to compare it to? Make an educated guess. What do you want me to compare it to? What's, what do you think is dominating that series? Four to the n on the bottom. Isn't that like the dominating thing there? 
Yes? The n on top is linear. 4 to the n, that blows up fast, doesn't it? I think that that thing behaves mostly like a, a 1 over 4 to the n. That's what I think it behaves like. I think it looks like this the most, which is really the same as me saying 1 fourth to the n. Do you agree? Yeah? Now, this may not work, but that's what my gut's telling me, all right? What type of series is this? Geometric. Geometric. What's R? One fourth. Therefore, this does what? It converges. Now, I don't care what it converges to. I just know it does, right? So I'm comparing this to a convergent series. Now I have some choices. Do I use part one, part two, or part three? Maybe what I should ask you is, is there any of those I, don't, I can't use, part one, two, or three? No part two, because part two says you're comparing it to a divergent, right? So you can throw two out. So if we do part one, we have to show an inequality. If we do part three, we have to do a limit. What would it be? I don't know. We'll have to see. I think maybe it might be worth us writing this again like this because those are equivalent, right? What are you, what are you feeling? Are you feeling the limit or are you feeling more the inequality? The inequality. You want to do inequality? What's the inequality you would have to show? Yeah. I'm going to split this into two because I'm going to do it both ways. If I do part one. I have to show, I want to show what? The a sub n is less than b sub n. If I do part three, I have to show that the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n over b sub n is a positive constant, right? What's that? OK. So let's look at, let's look at this right here, OK? Let's take a look at the inequality. n over. 4 to the n minus 3. I need to show that's less than, oh yeah, equal. I keep on forgetting the equal there. 1 over 4 to the n. You don't want to keep working with that? When we multiply both sides, clear fractions, we get this. Don't we? I need you to convince me that that's a true statement. I'm not convinced yet. I'm going to run out of room, so I'm going to erase this part, and I'll, I'll, do part, I'll do it the other way in a second. What would you do if you're trying to convince me that that's true? You want to add 3? I'm just playing with some algebra here. I'm doing that so I can factor out a 4 to the n. Y'all OK with that? Is that? If you start at 1, right? Start at 1, right? This is always a positive number. This is always, well, it's going to be 0, but then eventually it's going to be positive, positive, less than negative 3. No, not feeling good about this. That looks like that test failed. Do you all see that? Do you all see that this is always a positive number, and if n is bigger than 1, this is positive? Two positives cannot multiply to be something smaller than a negative. So that failed. Now, let me try the other way. The other way would have been that limit, right? What's the limit as n goes to infinity of n over 4 to the n minus 3 over 1 over 4 to the n? Isn't that a sub n over b sub n? OK, let's do some flipping. Are you all following me? OK. We have limit 
n goes to infinity. When I flip, I get n times 4 to the n over 4 to the n minus 3. And I want to know what happens as n goes to infinity now. Infinity over infinity. So L'Hopital, again. OK, be careful on top. When you take derivative of the top, you have to do product rule, right? So derivative of this times this, so 4 to the n plus n times 4 to the n times natural log 4 over 4 to the n natural log n. Come on, are you all there? Yes? Well, I'm hoping this turns out to be a positive real number. What can I do? That looks like a disaster. It's not, though. You can cancel. A 4 to the n appears in every term. You could even say factor a 4 to the n out and then cancel it. But this is gone, this is gone, this is gone, which leaves you with the limit as n goes to infinity. Shoot. Nope. n times natural log 4 over natural log 4, which is infinity. Failed. <laughs> Did it work? Did it work? <laughs> Test fails. So I, what I want you to keep in mind right here, okay, even though this seems like it's a journey where we keep on running into walls, is that the homework is where you're going to get this practice, all right? That's where you get, and that's, this is one of the most important sections to actually have my videos handy when you're doing your homework, all right? This, this is probably, the, back with integration, this is probably the, the next section you need it the most. Um, what I'm trying to show you right with these examples, I don't know if you've noticed this, but I'm giving you examples that we're getting stuck on, which leads us to a different method, right? Like we had the comparison, and then I set up the limit comparison and then showed that that worked. Now we have something where, okay, we tried both the comparison and then that limit also, and it's, it didn't work, then what do we do, right? Well, we're not out of methods, okay? We're not out of methods. The ratio is the next one, okay? Yes? Why did all three of four to the n's cancel Well, th this has a, these both had a four to the n, right? right? So I could just factor out a four to the n and be left with one plus oh, okay. n times natural log four okay, and then cancel. Okay, yeah. All right, so we're stuck with this one, right? We're stuck. Ratio test is the next test. And in my opinion, the ratio test is the best test on the page, the most powerful test on the page, the most used test on the page. As we move forward, you're, you're going to be using nothing but ratio tests, but not yet, okay? The ratio test says this. I always write ration. I don't know why. <laughs> ratio test. The ratio test involves looking at your, your um, sequence, right, the sequence, the a sub n, but this time you don't have to come up with something to compare it to, all right? You're going to compare it to itself. And what you're going to look at is the following ratio. The absolute value of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. And you're going to compute this, oh, limit, sorry, limit, then goes to infinity of this ratio. And it's hopefully going to give you an answer, L. And what are my conclusions? If L is less than 1, it converges. Absolutely, I'll tell you what that means in a little while, probably next class. If it's greater than 1 or infinite, it diverges. And if it is 1, it's inconclusive. All right, so let's do the problem we're stuck on, and let's hope we don't, we set this limit up, and let's hope we don't get one, okay? So we are going to now do this with the example we had. It was uh, n over 
4 to the n minus 3? Yeah? Okay, so let's set up this limit. Limit n goes to infinity of the absolute value of, all right, a sub n plus 1. That means this formula with n plus 1 plugged in. So n plus 1 over 4 to the n plus 1 minus 3. Isn't that a sub n plus 1? Sorry, a sub n plus 1. And then the bottom is n over 4 to the n minus 3. Do you agree? All right, let's, let's flip, okay, let's flip this. So we're going to get limit, n goes to infinity, absolute value. Um, this 4 to the n minus 3 comes up with the n plus 1, right? So I'm going to have n plus 1, and then times 4 to the n minus 3 over, and what's on the bottom? 4 to the n plus 1 minus 3 times n, so I'm going to write this way, n times 4 to the n plus 1 minus 3, like that. Yeah? All right. Now, with limits, with limits, I can always break things up. So let me see if you buy this. Limit, n goes to infinity. Um, all of these things are going to be positive, right? If n is 1, that's a positive number. This is always positive. So all of these are positive all the time, aren't they? Everything? So I don't need the absolute value. So I'm going to do this. n plus 1 over n times... 4 to the n minus 3 over 4 to the n plus 1 minus 3. Just splitting up into two different pieces. Is that all right? What does this limit go to? <clears throat> infinity over infinity. L'Hopital on that would give you what? 1. So that goes to 1, right? Times whatever that goes to. Yeah? I'm going to do that. I, this is a question mark. I'm going to do that as its own problem over here. And I'm going to change something up just a little bit and see if you believe me. Is that the same? All right, 4 to the n plus 1 is 4 to the n times 4. So I just pull a little 4 out, multiply, right? That's right. L'Hopital. What's the derivative of the top? 4 to the n times natural log of 4 over, okay, a constant in front of the function. So bring the constant out. What's the derivative of 4 to the n? 4 to the n natural log 4. Yes? Am I done? You get 1 fourth. When? You take out one fourth in the front of log and just realize that four, over n minus, four to the n minus three over four to the n minus three is one. You can't pull this four out. It would have to be a common factor. Okay. So you, if you pull the four out, this would have to become minus three fourths. Okay. Because there's no four. If this would have been a twelve, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Y'all follow that? This is equal to one fourth, which is, thank God, not one. It's less than one. That's what this test says, right? The ratio test says, if it's less than one, then it converges. It converges. It says converges absolutely, but I, I, don't, I haven't defined what that means yet. We have a couple of minutes. Um... Right, we have about seven minutes. I want you to see if you can do this. I'm going to give you one. Let's just see what you do with it. Yep. 
It's just, no, it's not a quiz, just to, just to practice. Sum n equals 1 to infinity of 4n plus 1 over uh, 3n cubed plus n. Does that converge or diverge? Enjoy. Go ahead and see what you can do with that in the next few minutes. See if you can at least determine what test you want to use.